Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm David. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a preview of building a Tetris game from scratch uh, using JavaScript and React. And uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of preview of what that looks like here. So here's the Tetris game. And then if I hit play, you'll see we have a full um, Tetris board here. We've got our pieces moving around. And we can do all the normal things you would do in a Tetris game. So we can do slow drops, we can do um, fast drops. Um, I'm just going to try and get one row cleared here so we can see what that looks like. Uh, let's get this down here. But yeah, you can see we have all the normal Tetris pieces. Um, and then on the right, you can see we have previews of upcoming pieces too. So now when I drop this, we should see a line clear. And um, also on the right, our lines to the next level went from 10 to nine and our points went up. And then you'll notice as I'm dropping, uh, using these pieces um, that on the right, we have previews of the upcoming pieces. So when I drop this one, I should get a yellow square next. So that's another, that's another thing we'll be taking a look at. So yeah, it's kind of all the normal things you would expect out of a Tetris game. Um, I think this will be a really good vehicle too for looking at some features of React. So this will use functional components, it'll use custom hooks, it'll use use state, use effect, use callback, it'll use memoization. Um, so really a lot of the things that you're gonna wanna know about if you're learning uh, how to use React or how to use some of these um, uh, you know, different features of React. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just pause this for now. So pause the game. And just quickly, we're gonna look at some of the different systems that are gonna be involved too, because I think it's helpful to understand um, what the things are that we're gonna to need to build. So here's just a screenshot from a game I was playing earlier. And you can see here, um, you know, we've got everything you would expect that we were just looking at, but I'm gonna break down um, some of these things in more detail. So the way this is gonna be set up is this dark purple area in the back is gonna be our board. And that's going to be 20 rows high, and it's going to be 10 columns wide. And the way that board's going to work is it'll have basically empty cells in all of those 200 uh, locations. And then as we're moving the player through the board, we'll update the board to reflect like where the pieces that the player is controlling. And then we'll also want to like look ahead and see if we were to do a fast drop where that piece would be placed. And that's what this ghost and fast drop is that I'm referring to here. So if we were to just completely drop the piece that we're using, uh, this is where it would end up. And then uh, the actual shapes, like the orange shape here, these are called tetraminos. This is just like a Tetris term for what these things are. And there's a bunch of different types of those. Um, and then up here in the top right, we're gonna have previews of the upcoming pieces and this is typically a feature in newer Tetris games. It's not part of the classic Tetris game, but I think it's a nice thing to include. And um, one thing that's kind of interesting too is that these are basically just reusing uh, a smaller version of the board and showing a piece uh, within that. Um, and then down here we'll have the stats for the player, so that's or for the game, so that's going to include what level you're on, how many lines you have left to clear before you go to the next level, and then uh, how many points you have, and that's pretty much all the the pieces of the the board. I'm going to move ahead a little bit here. One thing we'll look at too is because this the shapes aren't all the same dimensions. Uh, what the player is effectively going to represent is this um, dotted uh, container here around the shape. So we'll have kind of like a four by four uh, grid that we're dealing with, and the shape will only take up part of that. So as we move around as a player, we're going to be moving this larger grid around, and the piece just happens to exist within that. The tetramino just exists within that. And what that means is there's some special checking it'll affect the way that we want to do the checking for collisions. So for example, if we move left, when this uh, box with the dotted border hits the edge of the grid, uh, we still need to be able to move left more spaces because the left column is empty inside this grid. 
So what we'll actually be doing is checking against the all the the spots within the grid for the presence of the tetramino pieces, and that'll allow us to go, uh, you know, off move the player off the screen to the left or move all the way to the right up until the point where we actually hit the tetramino and not just um, this bounding box around the potential spaces that the tetraminos could be in. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll go through that in detail uh, when we do the actual coding for this. Another thing we'll take a look at is collisions. So um, the collisions are kind of interesting in Tetris. Um, as you're moving left and right, you can, there's different types of collisions you want to check for. So you want to make sure for one thing that the piece doesn't go outside the board. So that's one thing that we'll have to check. And then also if we bump into other uh, placed um, tetraminos on the board, uh, we don't want to be able to overlap with them, but it also shouldn't count as like a hit or like a, um, it shouldn't count as needing to like place the piece on the board because you want to allow people to bump into the edges of these before, uh, without having it just like stick in place. You only want it to stick in place when you run into something below the piece. <laughs> and then as we're moving the piece down, we we'll want to check to see if we hit um, anything that's any tetraminos that have already been placed on the board, or we'll also want to check to see if we've gone off if we're going to go off the bottom of the board. And if we're going off the bottom of the board, or we're going to hit another tetramino, that's when we'll want to actually like place the piece that we're using. And um, I've got over here look ahead because what we'll always want to do is we'll want to see what move we're trying to make and then look to see if it's possible first. And then if it is possible, we can allow it to happen. But if it's not, then we need to decide what to do. And that could include either not allowing the movement or um, causing it to be considered like a hit where we want to place the, the uh, tetramino on the board. Another thing we're going to look at is just how drops work. So um, the way Tetris works is it just automatically drops pieces uh, on a, a given increment. So initially it's going to be around one second in our game. And that just means every second the piece is going to fall one square. But we also want the ability to manually drop the piece by a square or drop the piece all the way down to where this ghost appears, like where's the last place it could go. So we'll have a slow drop, we'll have a fast drop, we'll have an auto drop, and then we'll also, anytime we manually do a slow drop or a fast drop, we we'll want to go over here and just turn off, uh, basically reset the auto drop timer because we won't want to make a move and then like immediately have an auto move happen. We we'll want to reset it so you get the full amount of time again before it automatically drops. So that'll be one thing we take a look at. And then um, another thing that we'll need to look at is when we actually complete lines. So if you imagine that we'd completed these two lines down here, um, what we're going to want to have happen is we're going to want to remove those lines from the board. We're going to want to update all these stats about the game over here on the right. Um, so we'll want to bump lines to the next level. Uh, we'll want to see if we leveled up, so we should add one to the level. And then we'll want to update our points. And then in addition to removing these two lines, uh, we need to keep the board consistently the same size. So we'll also want to insert blank lines at the top of the board or blank rows. So these are kind of the things that you have to handle um, when rows are cleared. And that's about it. There's a, there's a couple other smaller systems that we'll take a look at. Um, for example, the upcoming pieces um, is, is a kind of smaller system where we want to always keep track of, of at least uh, three additional pieces for the player. And then every time a piece is placed, we want to make sure that we grab from the uh, from this list of pieces over here, from, grab from the top, and then insert a new one, a new random one at the end, at the front of the list or the the uh, other end of the list. It's a, a queue, I guess, technically. So that's one thing we'll take a look at. And then um, I haven't gone too deep on scoring. Um, so the scoring that I'm doing is just kind of arbitrary. Um, I'm sure Tetris has like a uh, typical way that the scoring's handled, but I'm not using that uh, 
for the purposes of this video, but that's something you could definitely look at if you wanted to like use the normal uh, Tetris scoring in the future. So anyway, yeah, I think this will be a good series to, um, if you've never like worked on making a, a complete game before, I think this will be a good example of how to build one in React. Um, and then if you want to learn how to use React and how to use some of these different pieces of it that maybe you haven't used before, like um, use effect and use callback and use state and memoization, um, this will be a good opportunity to try and learn about some of those things. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments on what you think I should cover uh, when we go into the details of how to implement this, uh, please leave those in the comments below. And uh, I'll try and take in as many of those into account as I can when I'm making the, the in-depth tutorial. But um, yeah, I think this should be fun. So thanks for watching and I uh, look forward to going through this with you.